So this is the basic uh, cathode ray tube. So the deflection, so like I said, I can't show you in the school lab either because we do not have this in the school lab. I am serious. And I, are they important? Um, I'll be very honest, no. <laughs> because they don't always test you on this. In fact, um, in, in I think more than 10 years, they, I think this hasn't come out in SPM. Um, maybe objective, lah, one, two questions, but very easy to figure out the answer. Um, so I, I can't show you in the lab anyway. Uh, although it would be cool lah, huh, if you could see in the lab, but am I not? Can't even go to school now, talk about going to the lab. You know, it's like talking about some distant future, you know, maybe in the year 3000 or something. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, let's look at page uh, 176. All right, so I want you to take a look here uh, at, um, look at your page 176. I, make it, I, I still want to show you this. I'll put one side. Okay, maybe I zoom. Can I zoom in? Uh? Come, we zoom in a bit more. Ah, okay, we zoom in. Yay. Okay, so if you look at, if you take a closer look at this tube, this tube, okay, the name is a deflection tube. Uh, it's also known as parent tube. Oh, they don't give you the name here. Never mind. It's known as a deflection tube. Um, uh, just like you know, it's also known as parent's tube because the person who came out is parent. Remember, you 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 name it after you you always like you invent something you name it after yourself. But this poor fella, he named it after himself. Then people don't want to call his name. Poor thing. You got no control over that, lah. Okay, so maybe because people don't know how to pronounce. I don't know. Anyway, it's called a deflection tube. And if you take a closer look at the deflection tube, right, you should be able to see that. You should be able to see that um, it's pretty much the cathode ray tube um, construction. You still have the 6-volt power supply. You have the EHC power supply. You see over here, you have the cathode, the filament, the anode. Everything is the same in the first part on the left. What is different though is the anode. So the anode now you can see is the cylinder like I mentioned yesterday. We make it into a cylinder, a hollow cylinder, like a tunnel. It's a tunnel because... We want to create a positive field to attract the electrons. But we don't want the electrons to stop at the anode. We want the electrons to go through. So if they can move at a speed that's high enough, as the electrons reach, it won't stop. It will go through. I mean, they will go through. Some may be stopped, but the majority, because of the hollow cylinder, right? So this is the modification we make to the anode. Inside this bubble here, the round, round part here, okay, there is a third power supply. Third power supply. So three separate power supplies are. Third power supply here. And what we have here is another set of cathode and anode. Except we don't call it cathode and anode. We call them deflection plates. The deflection plates are metal electrodes. We connect them to this EHT power supply. They are not touching. You must remember for EHT power supply, the circuit is not complete. If you make the circuit complete, you cannot see any results. Because you can't see, let's just see, ma. you complete the circuit, then current flowing through, you can't see anything. Then for what? The reason we use EHT power supply is so that when they are not complete, it can still create an electric field. If you use the normal low voltage supply, there is no electric field. Actually, it got too weak. It's, the electric field is too weak to be able to see any uh, observation. Okay, so we have two deflection plates, which are basically just two metal plates. And we place a fluorescent grid. Now, this fluorescent grid we place in between here is not completing the circuit. I don't think, hey, teacher, hey, complete, ma. Ah, current flow through deflection plate. Ah, flow through the fluorescent grid. Ah, no. The fluorescent grid is not a conductor. It is just something coated. Alamak, let me look up the fluorescent. <laughs> what is the fluorescent material? Are you following? Fluorescent material is actually for quite a few types. Um, yeah, they have quite quite a few types. Fluorescent materials on screen, used for screens. I thought I used to know the name. I, I, I told you, uh, <laughs> goldfish memory. It's composed of a matrix of zinc sulfide and a dopant of 
copper, aluminium, or europium. So mainly zinc sulfide. Uh, so all these, so that means the material is basically you think of it as it's a it's a screen. Like in this case, uh, I've seen before, uh, the you see you see this diagram on the right side here. Okay, you see this this part of uh, the gold color part, that's your, your deflection plate. Is it? No, that's not your deflection plate. The the cylinder, the the the, the silver color thing, that's a deflection plate. The the gold color part is holding the fluorescent paper. Jeez. And then this fluorescent paper actually, right, is just a piece of plastic. Seriously, it's just a piece of plastic, or it's a piece of paper or laminated paper. The, I think the one I saw before was actually plastic. But then they draw the grid on it. Like um you've seen before, like in the bookstores, the 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 one that you give for kids to draw with marker pen, the cheapo plastic, then draw the screen ah, something like that. So it's a plastic surface, but they do coat a little bit with this zinc sulfide material. You know, zinc sulfide is the, the other type of fluorescent screen. Is they use a different kind of material, but it's a fluorescent screen. So it's the screen doesn't glow, ah. The screen they call it fluorescent, but it doesn't glow. It only glows when the electrons strike it. So doesn't complete the circuit. Huh? We connect these two deflection plates to this power supply. Now I want you to think. Electrons are uh, what charge? Huh? Electron what charge? Huh? Hmm. Wait, I, I'm actually asking. Okay, negative. They are attracted towards the? So the electron is negative, correct? They are attracted towards the? Positive plate. Positive plate. So when we create this deflection, uh, we put these deflection plates here. It creates electrical field. The electrons come here. Let's say lah. Let's say lah. Ha, you put the top plate connected to the positive uh, terminal. Here it's positive and it's negative. That means uh, when the electrons come here, a eh, here positive or now. Some may go straight here. It depends on how strong the field is. If the field is very strong, you will see the electrons all attracted towards the positive plate. If the field is not that strong, you might find it will be attracting the electrons, but not so much electrons go there. So it means it will pull. It's like trying to pull, but not strong enough. Then you will see the electrons going somewhere, like close to it. Like, okay, lah, it's, it's going down. That's why you see on the screen here, can you see like on the picture here? Okay, I took from LME, lah, huh? never mind because uh, I'm not printing book, ma, huh? so okay, it's okay to pinjam their diagrams. Kejap. So, because the are striking the screen, where the electrons strike the fluorescent screen, it will produce light energy. Because remember that the fluorescent screen, huh? What it does is it converts the kinetic energy of the um, uh, electrons to light energy when the electrons strike the screen. So the purpose of the fluorescent grid, because I say you can't see the cathode rays, ma. so the purpose of the fluorescent grid is to enable us to see how the electrons are moving in that field. Does that make sense? So the deflection tube, uh, the first part here, if you see, right, this part, my drawing is not straight, imagine it's straight. This part is exactly the same like the first part of the cathode ray tube, like we already learned last week. So I'm going to uh, just loosely say that, just going to say that the, the deflection tube here is made up of two parts. Parts. So the first part is the CRT part which is where um, the electrons come out, go through the anode, right? This is also commonly known as the electron gun because this is where you pew, 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 you shoot the electrons, okay? Then there is a second part over here, which is where the deflection, the, the, oh my God, what am I saying? The deflection plate is, this part is sometimes uh, known also as the deflection system. Because remember, to deflect means to change direction. So this that means we want to change the direction of the electrons la, moving, okay? So it's a deflection system. So now we can see that the deflection system uh, is made up of one set of plates, one pair of plates we place this way, okay? So that's how we control the electrons moving up and down. Now, quick question before we go into the next, uh, the next tube. We can see the plates up and down, so therefore the electrons 
or the cathode rays can only go up and down. If we want the cathode rays to move left and right, what can we change or what can we modify to enable that left to right movement? Like, we you know, grid like horizontal? Correct. We place the grid horizontal, correct. Position of the anode. Well, not the grid, the deflection plate must be horizontal. So the energy power supply. Uh, not so much. Position of the anode also doesn't change. It's because the anode is part of the electron gun. So that means the deflection plates, you got to put them this way. And the deflection, um, the force will be also this way. Does that make sense? But Miss so, Fu, the plate like obstruct the electrons from flowing through the... Oh, no, no, no you, don't, you don't block it. Um, that means, uh, let's say, right... Uh, Let's say this is the path of the, I draw here. Uh, let's say this is the path of the electrons, right? The cathode ray. So what you do is, okay, the plates, like the, the, the this plate we put on top, uh, like that, up and down. So if you want, then you put side by side like that. You understand? That means oh, you can, uh, Thank you. So that means if, if, uh, if you want to be able to control the electron ray, the cathode ray, up, down, left, right, you need two pairs of plates. One vertical set and one horizontal set. Okay, don't know whether it's the mind. One up, down set, one left, right set. And each set, each pair has their own EHT supply. Like over here, you can see... Oh, he got EHT. Well, he got three, you know, power supply. Oh, one is this one. Another one is, oh, I got number three. Then you put another set. Oh, then you have four. That means that uh, in this kind of, if you put a deflection system with two pairs of plates, you need two different EHT supply. Means in total, this whole thing has four power supply. But you don't learn that level. You only learn up to this one, lah, three levels. Okay? The old syllabus got, the old, old syllabus Got, I don't know why they took it out because that one is uh, relevant for you to <laughs> see how it works. But never mind, you don't learn this. But I just want you to be aware. So at least uh, you, you don't realize, you don't think you only got one. Actually, you, you, you want to modify something like this, you need to know how to make the changes. So that's how like, heart rate monitors, like, I keep saying heart rate monitors because it's easiest to visualize. The heart rate monitor is going left to right after all. Ma. Moving left to right, moving up and down. So that kind of thing, you need to have additional like plates and all that. Okay? Any questions? Okay, clear. Let's go to the Maltese cross tubes. All right, uh, so I'm going to put in the Maltese cross picture now. I didn't put there because I I wanted you to listen to me talk first. If I put picture there, you will be busy looking at the picture instead of listening to this whole... So oh, let's look at page 177. So we have over here, this is known as a Maltese cross tube. Now the Maltese cross tube was designed by William H. Crook. And why got Maltese cross? What is a Maltese cross? What's all this? Okay. The Maltese cross is quite simply the name of the shape. So that's why you see in your book here, they labeled here, right? Maltese cross tube. This one is the name of the shape. Like you have the uh, red cross, huh? The Christian cross, okay, this is a Maltese cross. This is just the name of the shape. So this fellow, why he put a Maltese cross, I also don't know why, but the speculation, and this is true, you go and Google and see, um, the person right, who designed this Maltese cross tube, his name is William H. Crook. And they said that maybe his name, uh, his, he, his name Crook sounds very much like a cross. Then he's very proud. Uh, he wants people to know his names and remember him. So they decided, okay, he's going to put a Maltese cross so everyone always remember, oh, his name, Crook, sounds like cross. I don't know, lah, that's what they said, okay? Seriously, I read this in a, in a, a few websites. <laughs> so anyway, the Maltese cross is the name of this shape. Okay, so if you take a look at the Maltese cross tube, the whole thing, it's also made up of two main parts. The first main part is just like the deflection tube, first main part also. This part is the CRT section or the electron gun section. 
So you can see here, you've got a power supply, you've got the filament, you got a cathode, you have the anode, the tunnel anode. Remember the number to chung, chung, go through on it? Ah, then this up to here. Lo. But if you look at the second part here, this part doesn't have the deflection system because it's a multi cross tube. So this part, this part. There's no, there's no plates, there's no fluorescent grid, but there is a fluorescent screen. So remember, like I mentioned last week, they, we coat one part with the um, the fluorescent material, the zinc sulfide material, right? So let me we'll coat one small section here. Now let me get, let me show you a picture. Photos of the Maltese cross tube, but I don't know where I put them. So I will just take from Google because Google is my best friend. Because Google has the answer for everything. If you try to Google, you know, like Google, what is the meaning of life? Ah, you can also actually find the answer. Whether the answer is correct or not is not the, the case. You can find an answer, it could be a wrong answer, could be a weird answer, but there is an answer. So anyway, um, so we take a look at the Maltese cross. Once the image looks up, so you see the Maltese cross tube, right? Um, so this is the fluorescent screen, the green color part here, they coated, right? That's actually the fluorescent screen part. Okay, so you can see the Maltese cross, you can see the, the shape over there. Okay, so that's the Maltese cross. Lah. Okay. So, what is this Maltese cross tube for? Now, the purpose of these two tubes, the deflection tube and the Maltese cross tube, the purpose of having these two tubes and to observe them is to enable us to determine the properties of cathode rays. Properties of cathode rays. So I'm just going to create another uh, screen here. We're going to add in the information later. Okay, properties of cathode rays. Why we want to know the properties is because in order to be able to make practical devices, you must know how to manipulate or control the cathode rays. But you cannot control them if you don't know what the properties are. That's why we need to learn about this. So let's backtrack a little bit. Backtrack a little bit. This way, backtrack. So I forgot mirror image here, backtrack. The deflection system in the deflection tube shows us that cathode rays can change direction. How they change direction? They get pulled to the positive plate. So this proves to us that cathode rays can be deflected in an electrical field. Or you want to say it gets attracted to the positive plate also can, but I'm writing it this way because it sounds very physicky. Because we all want to sound smart, ma. we all take science, we want to sound smart, smart. Ma. So that's why we write like that. Ah. Sounds smart, smart a bit. So the deflection tube proves to us that if there's an electrical field, cathode rays can get deflected in them. The Maltese cross is going to help us determine another set of properties. So can you please flip, please flip now to page 178 of your textbook. 178. Next page. Lah. So on the top, you can see, oh, we've got deflection tube. Ah, upper chuck up. That one we already learned last week. Lah, huh? We already learned last week. Okay. So let's look at the bottom part, Maltese cross tube. Then, wow, I got this S1, la, S1, S2. Okay, now mind we explain. Let's look at all that. So I'm going to put the answers over here. Well, not answers, our results explanation over here. So S1 is on. So when they say S1 is turned on, that means only S1 is on. I'll add on over here, S2 is off. Okay, they did right there. La. So we have just to be aware. For the first one, S1 is turned on, S2 is off. Okay. I'm going to put the results here. Lah. Now, filament. Ah, this filament. Ah, let's talk about this filament. Okay, filament. Oh my God, I'm going to write. Let me label filament. This filament is exactly like a light bulb filament. Now, when a light bulb filament, uh, you, you connect it to a power supply, the light bulb filament is switched on. The filament releases two things, right? It converts electrical energy to two forms of energy. Can you name them for me? Heat energy, correct? As well as light, correct? So 
the filament releases two forms of energy, heat as well as light. Now, both are, uh, I mean, what happens is the filament actually releases heat first. Some of that heat is converted to light. That's why light bulbs are not very efficient. So in this case, the Maltese cross tube, the heat is important because you need the heat to um, heat up the cathode. Otherwise, electrons cannot be released, right? Um, but then also, there's light. So that's why you see, hey, this photo, wow, got light here. Oh. Come from where one? Come from the filament. And this light also important for the for this experiment, for this Maltese cross tube, the light is experiment. Okay, and let's look at it. Let's look at why. So Will there be electrons released from the cathode? Yes or no? We switch on S1, huh? S1 is switched on. The, is there any electrons coming out from the cathode? Is there any thermite emission? Yes. Okay, thank you. But S2 is off. If S2 is off, will the electrons move from the cathode to the anode? Yes or no? No. Correct. So, as a result, the electrons have come out and they're having a party, but they're not moving, they're not going anywhere because there is no positive pull. So what will we see on screen? So that's what, that's what the, the diagram shows you here uh, in your textbook. Uh. I, I want, I'm going to draw because um, I, I, I love my drawing so much. I want my students to admire my drawing as well. So... Yeah, it's not a complete circuit, correct? So that's why, how can electrons go? How can electrons move? There's no positive attraction. Ma. So what we have here on screen, okay, la, I, I won't draw, la, ha, I won't torture you, okay? Uh, but I will do it this way. I know the drawing is very bad. I know I can just copy and paste from your textbook, but I don't want. I, I want to do this <laughs> because you humor me, okay? I'm, I'm, I, it, at home for during pandemic, is a bit difficult. So what you have is the Maltese cross, you get a shadow. You get, you'll see a shadow of the Maltese cross. See the Maltese cross, you see, uh, the electrons are traveling straight. The Maltese cross is directly blocking its path. Okay, It's a direct block. So if the filament is on, there's light being released, right? It's like taking a torchlight and you switch on to the Maltese cross. And then what you get is a shadow formed at the back. So the shadow you see in your textbook, on page 178, yellow color light there is showing us that this is a shadow from the light. Nothing to do with electrons. Okay? So you will still see a shadow. You will still see something on the screen, but not from the electrons. It's from the light. Now, second one. If we switch both on this time, we switch on S1 and S2. Tell me, will the electrons move towards the anode? Yes or no? If we switch both on now, S1, S2, will the electrons move towards the anode? Yes. Now remember, correct. Now remember that the anode is a tunnel. Huh? It's a tunnel. So the electrons won't stop there. If they, some of them are moving so fast, they'll go right through to the other side. So what happens is when the electrons go right through, they're trying to reach the other end. Imagine it's straight, lah. Huh? But this end, voila, got, got another obstacle there. Maltese cross come and block, block. Some may get through, some may not. So some might pass through, some might not. So then what you see on screen, you will see this, actually, you'll see this. The photo shows us this. Um, so in your book, like, now suddenly, eh, wow, suddenly green color. How come green colors suddenly change, change color? Okay, so this is why. Because the older kind of fluorescent screens, right? The old kind of screens. Oh, yeah, sorry. The old screens. Uh, have you seen monochrome screens before? Any of you ever seen old mono, uh, monochrome screens before? You know what's monochrome? Alamak. Uh? Um, the old computer monitors, old computer monitors, right? Uh, they have no color. They're not black and white. Um, TVs, yes, TVs are black and white. But computer monitors, computer monitors, the old type is all green color. 
Ah, all green. That's why that's why you watch all those movies about um IT hacking and all that. Ah, the the dominant colors always green, and that's not because you know they like green color. Okay, again, ah, so because computer monitors back then, the materials that they use, the fluorescent screen material they use, um, emits green light. It emits green light. That's why a lot of IT the the dominant color is green because it is a uh what's the term. It's uh, uh in what's the term? in honor of uh, it it is it, it is uh it's reminiscent of the old times last time where everything was was not black and white for the monitors but it was green TVs yes TVs was black and white but computer monitors was green so anyway so it's the same, this is the same kind of um fluorescent screen is the glass bulb yeah uh they paint they paint the material on the glass bulb. Uh, Miss Hu, so like originally there's already the green color. Uh, the original one is it's not green. Let me find a see if I can find a picture. Not the original color is this white. Can I find the uh, the original? Maltese cross. Ah, it's the original. It's white color. This is the original uh when it's not switched on. Can you see? So it's so the green color is only when when somehow it's when when the when the uh what do you call the electrons strike that, that screen, then then you see green color because that's where the light, the green light is emitted. So it's the fluorescence is the paint itself that's making it reflect green color. No, the green color, the, the screen. The fluorescent screen converts kinetic energy of the electrons. I write short form, uh, to light energy. That means at the point where the electrons strike the screen, that point where it strikes, that's where the light is, is emitted. It's like um, it's a it's something about photons and all that. I might not go into that. Basically, when electrons hit the screen, light is emitted at that point in time. It's not a constant release. It's also not like on oh, on the time. It's not that at a point, part light and that that no more. Then it goes off la. So um, so now the thing is, why so so now that we understand, okay, now that we understand, okay, it's when the electrons strike the screen, you get that light. But then you see, hey, got a Maltese cross shape there, wah. Well. How come got the ship there? The Maltese cross blocking, ma? Okay, so when we look back at the light concept, so last time when you first learned about shadows, uh, take the light, touch light, you shine on object, then you see the shadow has the same shape as the object, like a ball, uh, shine, ooh, round ball, round, round, then the shadow so round, round. What does that prove to us? What does this tell us about light? When you shine, ooh, the shadow, same shape as the object. What does it tell us about light? Moves in a straight line. Correct. So if you see in the second one, the cathode rays are now producing the same shape as the light. And you see in number two, you see green color. Actually, right, in the second one, there's two shadows, you know. There's the yellow light and there is the green light. But you can't see two shadows. Why? Because it overlap exactly in line. What does this tell us about cathode rays? Moves in a straight line as well. Yes, exactly. Correct. Cathode rays move in a straight line. Exactly. Like with the light rays. So, good job. Correct. Okay, the, does this make sense, everyone? So, because the thing is, we can't see uh, cathode rays. You can see light rays. You can see light rays. You can actually, sometimes, you know, you can actually see the light ray moving in a straight line. But cathode rays, you cannot see. So, in order to prove that they travel in a straight line, we need to do an experiment. And this experiment proves to us cathode rays move in a straight line. How do we know this? Because light, we already know. It's an established fact, light travels in a straight line. Then we see, eh, cathode rays and light rays, the shadow, same, same. So this proves that cathode rays move in a straight line. Okay? Okay, yeah. Last one. 
of 23 already. Last one, we switch both on, but now we come and bring magnet, come and catch out, come and catch out with the magnet. That's one turn on, and then we go and put magnet. Then you see uh, what happens is the shadow, one of the shadow moves. One of the shadow moves. Uh, I don't want to draw, la. the drawing is very bad. Let me let me uh, show you. Uh, you can Google it yourself also if you don't believe me, but I will, but because it's his class, I will put in a photo for you. But never mind. We will make do with the photo. Wait, I get another photo for you. Show you another one. Sure, another so one. for all these uh, categories and these uh, categories with a multi cross tube, they're trying to just produce an image, is it? Yes. Because if you can't produce an image, then there's no point because you can't see what's happening. Oh, so for them to produce an image, we need this cross tubes, is it? Or no, you, you need a cathode ray tube. The, I can say the multi cross tube is just to, to study the properties. It's not oh, a practical device. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Thank you. Teacher, mm. and that property is that cathode rays move in a straight line. Yes, that's one of the properties. Yeah, and then the fluorescent grid, I don't quite get the concept of the fluorescent. I, I know that like uh, once you switch on S1, S2 for the cathode ray, and then what's it called? The electrons uh, will be attracted to the positive deflection plate. And what is the fluorescent grid doing there? It's to show you the electrons. If you don't have the fluorescent grid, how are you going to see the electrons? Oh, the electrons look like... You can't see electrons, no? Oh, so it just shows like... What What? what does it show? It shows you the path of the electrons. Oh. Mm. So does it look like light going towards the positive plate or...? It's not light. The, the, the light happens because the electrons hit the fluorescent screen. Electrons are not light. Oh, so, so it looks like it's kind of glowing, is it? Yeah, it's a bit glowing. Like you see the photo, you, can, uh, you saw the, the, the photo I shared, right? It's, it, there's a slight glow. That, that's a real photo. That, that's not, it's not like, you know, uh, fabricated. Ah, here's another one I wanted to show you. Here we go. Okay, I, I know I put, let me, let me wrap this off. Too much is going on here. So you see, right, you put a fluorescent, if you don't have a fluorescent grid, can you see what's happening or not? Uh, no. So that's why you need a fluorescent grid. So the, where the electron comes in contact, that's where the light is seen. Oh. So, okay. So it's like imagine if you run across a muddy field, your footprints are left behind. So these are the footprints of the electron on the fluorescent grid. Understand. So it looks okay. like that glowing thing. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, because but then it's a temporary thing because it's not permanent. So what happens is the you only see it when the electrons are in contact. So if the moment in contact light, then if no more, then no more light. So you see this continuous line because there's a continuous stream of electrons moving. There's a lot of electrons that keep on moving that's creating that line. Oh. Like same, flash. Mm, so same thing like the Maltese cross tube also. You see this lamp, it's like a light, also a bit like light. Huh? You see the shadow because the light is on. You switch off the light, no more shadow. Same thing with the electrons. You switch on, ah, then when it's hitting the screen, you see the, the, the light. Then you switch off, no more electrons, then it goes off. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. So the thing is, so then what happens is the last one, if you bring a magnet nearby, the light shadow doesn't move because the light is not, is not affected by magnetic field. But you will find that the green color shadow, it moves. Now, how it moves um, depends on where, you know, where's the magnet, is it north or south pole? Okay, but you can, but I put some, a couple of pictures here just to show you that um, there are some, that it causes the, it causes some distortion or it causes a deflection in the green shadow. So, what I want to say here, ah, because what we learned in Fleming's left hand rule, when you place a wire with current in a magnetic field, 
it can cause force. It can cause a diffraction. The, the, the wire will move. In this case, there's no wire. But current is actually what? Electrons, ma. So if the electrons are in a magnetic field, the electrons are forced to change direction. That's what's happening in the third one. That's why when you bring a magnet bar nearby, you find that the uh, green color shadow will move. The light shadow won't move. The pictures here are not great. Um, I have a better picture. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Because I took it many, 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 many years ago. So I don't know where it is. Because I actually saw the Maltese cross tube in person. Then they showed up with the magnet. Then I took photo. Then I don't know where I put the picture now. So I have to go and find. I really, I don't know where I put it. If I find it, then eventually I'll show you. Okay. But anyway, this is just to prove to you. Lah. This is to show you that. And to explain to you what's going on here. That's why you see the yellow color shadow still there. The green color shadow move. Can you understand? <sighs> okay, so what does this prove to us? Like in the deflection tube, this proves to us that cathode rays can be deflected in, the, in, in an electrical field. So in this case then, putting the magnet bar proves to us what? Cathode rays can be deflected in a Magnetic field? Yes, thank you. I, I copy and paste because I don't want to retype everything. So, But yes, I will change that to correct magnetic field. So there are three properties that you need to know of um, about cathode rays. So remember, the deflection tube and Maltese cross tube are not practical uh, applications. They are just lab applications. They are for us to just study in the lab. We don't actually use it in real life. So this is one of the properties. This is the other property and it's the other property. Okay. So let me type that out for you on this page. Uh, what is it? Let's see, cathode rays. Let's, let's do this one first in a straight line because this is important. Okay, then we have cathode rays can be deflected in an electrical field and then number three hey up and wish uh let me sneak it a bit smaller so I can fit okay any questions so the thing is, why you need to know about the properties is because in order to be able to make practical devices, like I said, all the things I kept mentioning over and over again, the TV, the monitor, whatever, right? Um, in order to be able to come up with those practical devices, you must know how to control the cathode rays. But you cannot control them, you cannot manipulate them if you don't know their properties, if you don't know how they behave. So the purpose of these two tubes is just to find out what those properties are. Does that make sense? Like another, give you another example of practical versus, um, like lab versus practical. Um, maybe not device, but like an experiment. Last year, you all did a button pendulum, right? Button pendulum is related to which topic? Do you remember? Martens, force and motion, C2, no, buttons, button, not mutton. There's not mutton either, okay? Buttons pendulum. You, have, you should have, you can do this at home also. You don't have to wait for, you don't have to, don't have to do that, you can do it at home, one. buttons pendulum. It's under resonance. Barton's pendulum is a lab experiment. It's not a practical experiment. It's a lab experiment you do to understand resonance. But in real life, there's there's no use. You use Barton's pendulum in real life, tada one. Like not same speed. Not same speed, same frequency. Tada pakai one, you ask you to build no point. A practical use of resonance would be 
for example, um, ultrasonic cleaning. Like we use we use machines with high frequency to clean sensitive equipment. That like instead of taking a brush and clean, you put these devices inside the um, machine, right? You shake at high frequency. It doesn't break them, but it will clean the 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 um the equipment. Those people who have kidney stones, those with kidney stones, right? Yeah, they also use resonance to break kidney stones sometimes. So those are practical applications. Barton's pendulum is not a practical application because there's no use. But you use it in the lab to understand how resonance works. So there are some things which are for lab only for us to learn, some which are for everyday usage that's beneficial to the society. The ones in your books here, your book here, the um, the 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 deflection tube and Maltese cross tube are not practical. There is no use in daily life, but they are used in the lab to help us understand the concept better. Does that make sense? Can you understand the difference or not? So why I am stressing this? Because I know the question is going to come out again. Teacher, what is this for? <laughs> That's why I preempt the question. I answer first before you ask. These are not practical. Don't ask me why they didn't put the practical one inside. The old syllabus got the old syllabus. They threw in one a practical device so that everyone can understand. Oh, why we learn this? I they took that out. They only put these two in. I don't know why. I have no answer for you for that one. So I preempt. I answer you now. I don't know why. Okay. So, yeah, so I, I don't know why they do this actually. I don't know why they put some things in, put some things out because I feel that if you want to understand something better, you have to learn the practical usage. Um, anyway, it's not in your syllabus, so I'm not. I won't teach that. Too winded and too complicated. So up to here, lah. We we learn up to this point. All right. So there's a little bit more in this chapter, which is just uh, page 179, which is on the velocity of an electron as well as the calculation of the uh, at the bottom there. But I realized that the time is up already.